Hello and welcome back to the Yogi's Pod. I will be continuing the story of my journey with Isha and spirituality in this series. And now we are on to step 4. And before we begin, I want to clarify that these Isha programs are not to be looked at as levels of spirituality. It's better we look at this as opportunities of inner growth. But is such a thing denied to you wherever you are right now? Of course not. We are talking about an inward journey here. So you technically don't need to do a spiritual program as such, but practically speaking, it may help. But I'm not here to convince you of anything. I don't have an agenda, believe it or not. I'm just sharing my story. So let's pick it up from where we left off last time. I am in the Isha Yoga Center and I had just gone through the silence program and my world had changed completely. Everything was the same, but my perspective and the way I experienced life changed completely i stayed on till mahashivratri which again was a lot of fun and i also did the panchabhuta aradhana process with sadguru and as per my discussion with swami i was going to do the isha hatha yoga teacher training now so after a quick visit to delhi i was back in the ashram for a 6 month stint i purposely arrived a month early because i wanted to attend the lap of the master program with sadguru and especially after samima i felt my receptivity was enhanced and i just wanted to be in a consecrated space and around sadguru as much as possible i'm sure some of you can relate to that but anyway soon uh, guru pornami was around and the isha hatha yoga teachers training starts so as you may already know it's a 21 week program and it costed me about 6 lakh indian rupees or uh, 10000 us dollars at that time and this covered all the costs from the stay food academic aspects and everything there is an interview and screening process in which they make sure this is something you can commit to and also if you're physically and mentally fit to go through this 1750 hours of training so the way i approached it is pretty much the way i approach anything which is in a seriously playful way and i had an absolute blast i would start my day at about 3 am start my shakti chalana kriya by 3:30 am which is brahma murtam and get done with my shambhavi by 5:30 and then hatha yoga sadhana starts Uh, this is not the ideal sequence so don't get confused i did this because it was difficult to take out time for kriyas later in the day so yeah we start at 5:30 am with the upayoga then angamardana surya kriya surya shakti yogasanas bhakti sadhana and then isha kriya this was mostly the morning sadhana through these 21 weeks with a few changes here and there with the introduction of new practices or processes so this goes on from 5:30 am till about uh, 10 am then brunch by 10:30 am next session at 11:30 am to 2 pm usually some academic aspect was addressed in this session and 20 minutes of uh, nadi shuddhi and om chanting which we did without fail every afternoon um which was a bit of a drag sometimes as many yoga teachers will tell you but this is something that we teach and it's incredible for one psychological balance then by 2 pm would be snack time which would consist of a piece of fruit and kullu or horse gram soup which is basically a super food for hatha yogis i loved it and my friends uh, thought there was something wrong with me since i never missed a day of it then i would run off for a dip in the surya kund to keep myself injury free and energized for the next session which would start by about 4:30 pm and went on till uh, 6:45 7 pm So this would be the evening sadhana session wherein we would do all the hatha yoga practices which we did in the morning once again. And by the way the Isha school of hatha yoga makes some changes and refinements every year or so. So things are a bit different now. But uh, back in my day <laughs> things were tough since uh, mine was the third batch of hatha yoga teachers training and the sadhana sessions were longer and the senior teachers at the school were well um, less accommodating to comforts and conveniences let me put it this way but uh, i loved every second of it i would look forward to every sadhana session because it was an opportunity to explore the deeper aspects of my system and the sadhana enhances so many things from your senses to receptivity perception everything hatha yoga i feel is a very sure footed way of moving forward in terms of growth you don't need to understand gyana yoga bhakti yoga kriya yoga 
it's all good just get into the asana there is no need to talk or explain things there will come a time you will understand it all or at least you will begin to understand it it looks mechanical from the outside but it really isn't and it is difficult to explain how or why is it so especially in this video but if you practice it in a certain way and you slowly become sensitive to the processes happening within you it can accelerate your growth on many levels this whole training process of five and a half months happens in the consecrated space of the Adi Yogi Alayam and as I mentioned to you earlier that this happens after Guru Pandami which means that the entire training duration happens in a period called Dakshinayana which means uh, it is a period which is conducive for your sadhana or to work upon yourself on a spiritual level. As compared to the other half of the year Uttarayana which is more sort of uh, harvesting or uh, reaping what you sow kind of a deal in my crude and limited understanding. Uh, so now my experience of this training period is that you will go through an immense period of growth. And growth doesn't come without its opposing forces or forms of resistance, uh, you know, caused by you only. Uh, so these hours and hours of sadhana builds up and is culminated by a powerful initiation into Bhuta Shuddhi. In my year, I was fortunate enough to have Sadhguru himself initiate me into the process of Bhuta Shuddhi and uh, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> And this experience clearly indicated the importance of just putting in the work every day. You don't feel like waking up in the morning, it doesn't matter. You set out for something and it's not a small thing. If you want to call yourself a spiritual seeker, there is work to do and you got to show up. And you build, build, build something, something within you and you destroy something else. And it's not necessarily going to be pleasant, but you do it anyway because you signed up for it. <laughs> no one asked you to. You can only do it for yourself. And uh, I wasn't the only one doing this. I was surrounded by people who were putting themselves through whatever they thought was deemed necessary for them to grow on this path. From people coming out of tough situations like bad breakups or divorces, from all kinds of situations, people wanting to leave their past lives behind, from all walks of life, all ages, many different countries, ethnicities, etc all aligned for a singular purpose which is to know more of what we call life and that itself is a beautiful thing in terms of the course content itself it's very comprehensive i mean they literally could not pack in more the main focus is on the actual experience of the sadhana uh, which again cannot be put into words or described because you can only experience it directly Especially when it comes to subjective aspects because that's what most of the Siddha medicine, Ayurveda and these sorts of uh, the ancient systems of medicines are about. The Western or the objective scientific methods are also given importance. Practicing doctors, very experienced ones at that, uh, often would come and give these uh, lectures on various aspects of human anatomy, physiology and all these topics to give you at least a basic understanding in case you need to understand the ailments of your participant and uh, recommend yogic practices accordingly. Anyway, so that's all included in the course. So the next question naturally is, who should do this program? Well, if you have nothing to do for 21 weeks and you have $10,000 jangling in your pocket, then yes, you may technically qualify for this program. You know, many people call me and ask me for recommendations on which uh, yoga teachers training course they should do. And I don't know what else to do but recommend this one because I don't know any better. I just don't know. I'm not trashing the others. I just can't recommend them because I don't know anything about the others. Uh, but I do know there are a lot of shady ones out there and they don't have any spiritual substance. They're just scams targeting this unregulated space and they, are, uh, they target gullible people who are interested in spirituality but they don't have a good understanding of it yet. There are yoga teachers training courses available for as low as uh, 20 US dollars and you get a certificate in three days. Hell, even I could make my own yoga teachers training course and probably make a lot more money. All I have to do is uh, add my own twist to the classical yoga, which has remained unchanged for a reason for thousands of years, you know, and uh, sprinkle something here and there and call it my own, you know, something like uh, Dharmitra Yoga TM, you know, <laughs> and boom, I have my own money making course right there. The reason I don't do this is because I don't know the bad karma, that's one. <laughs> and I genuinely care about people's well-being, believe it or not. <laughs> but after going through this program with Isha, I realized how much 
depth there is in different branches of yoga. But these days, yoga teachers have all the fancy sounding names on their resumes. Uh, Kundalini Yoga, Kriya Yoga, Vinyasa, Neo Flow Yoga. You know, the more new agey it sounds, the better. And what most people don't get is that in order to master any one branch, it takes decades of work. But they want to declare things today. They're enlightened with their aesthetic pictures on Instagram with captions just so full of it. And uh, for this reason, I don't like calling myself a Hatha Yogi or anything because uh, I don't think I'm there yet, honestly. The few practices that I know, I have been practicing for almost 10 years now and I can teach them well. But being a master of it, I don't see myself like that. So if you're looking for yoga teachers training course for a couple of weeks or something you can do over weekends uh, or you're coming to India on a vacation and you're thinking of becoming a yoga teacher for funsies, well, this isn't for you because it takes a lot more effort, energy and willingness to do this. Towards the end of the course, if you have given yourself fully to the process, you will be unrecognizable. You will have a level of stability and strength within yourself which is priceless and it will be yours to keep for the rest of your life. And another amazing thing which happened towards the end of the program is that Sadhguru said that some of the teachers have transformed themselves to such an extent that it would be appropriate for them to receive a new name from him. And that is how I got my name, Dharmitra. I will see you in the next yogic step, yogic step 5.